You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, new treatment options for people that are suffering with gum disease. My first guest is an expert on the topic, San Diego dentist, Dr. Patterson. Dr. Patterson, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. I'm real excited to be here. Now, before we get into today's topic, uh, tell me a little bit about your practice. What kind of patients do you see? Randy, I'm a family dentist. I have people come to me for their checkups. And so that might be small children to older adults and everyone in between. You know, when I told you, you know, when we met, uh, that, uh, I mean, you don't act like a dentist. You don't look like a dentist. You don't dress like a dentist. You came in here, you're wearing shorts. Uh, do you hear that a lot, though? Uh, I do. Uh, I mean, you're a very down-to-earth guy. You know, on your message machine, you know, you, I don't know you how don't else call to yourself act. doctor. Good. And, and your daughter, I understand, wants to, seven-year-old daughter wants to be a dentist. Yeah, or, I think or I'm at rubbing, least like working with you, right? I think I'm rubbing off on her. Uh, she's actually assisted me on some family members that need treatment right? on the weekends. So yeah. she's right there with the family members, oh, yeah. uh, wearing a mask and the whole bit. Now, you, you went to a dental school where? In Cleveland? Yes, I did. Actually, I first got my undergrad training at Ohio State. I'm okay. a big Buckeye fan. All right. And uh, came back to Cleveland, where I'm from, to go to Case Western Reserve. Okay, so let's talk about uh, gum disease. Um, and we're talking about advanced treatment options, new treatment options for people with gum disease. I guess traditionally, how is it handled and what are you doing? Well, this is a subject I'm really excited about and okay. I think that it's not well known yet and it's really a revolutionary process. The traditional treatment for gum disease was painful and a lot of people... Which is what? What's the, the traditional gums treatment? are cut. We are trained to tell the patients that we're just loosening the gums, but the gums are cut and loosened and the treatment is to get rid of the infection that way. But the process afterwards of healing is very painful and it takes several weeks to heal from that process. Okay, so stitches, cutting, they're scraping this bacteria that's Off on the, the tooth root. Yes. And so now that, for the most part, may be a thing of the past someday. That these lasers are treating that. Is that correct? Without cutting, without stitches? Yes, partially. And it's an alternative and it's a painless alternative that I feel people need to know about. And it works. We, it flat out works. It, I have patients I have done traditional gum surgery on, and I've also done the laser on the other side of the mouth, and uh, I can tell the difference because the laser side is actually healing better. It's better. It is. Really? In in interesting. You say from the day that went into your office, this laser, you've used it every day since. And multiple is multiple that right? times per day, yes. I mean, how has it changed your practice, by the way? Uh, it's changed the way I think about it. Uh, how I'm going to treat patients. Uh, how so? I am now no longer reticent to do care on people for fear that they might have pain afterwards or that it might be too expensive. This is a treatment that is less painful. It's more than half the cost off regular periodontal cutting and stitches treatment. Yes, is that it is. true? And every bit is effective without the pain. Let's begin then with uh, what are the symptoms of gum disease? Okay. And what is it? And, and by the way, is periodontal disease the same as gum disease? Same things? Yes. Okay. Periodontal disease is what most people know as gum disease. What do the patients call it, by the way? They say they have some bleeding gums. Okay. And that's the biggest sign. Now, let's go through a progression. Gum disease is a progression. It starts out with a little bit of bleeding, maybe when you're brushing your teeth. Uh, what about flossing? When you're flossing. People but aren't your gums supposed to bleed a little bit during flossing? No, not when they're healthy. Really? What I tell okay. people is if you keep flossing, they should stop bleeding. Too many people stop flossing so that they don't have their gums bleed. But let's go into the progression. First you have a little bit of bleeding, then there's some puffiness of the gums. What happens later that a lot of people regret if they don't go see their dentist, if it's not detected properly and treated, is that they'll have a bone around their teeth lost and the gum follows. You start seeing longer teeth that are not nice to look at, no longer as attractive as when maybe they were younger and they start noticing it in pictures. And so this is a bacteria under the gum line? So I understand yes, it is. I mean, could you have a white top, but underneath you've got this? You could have somebody with uh, very nice white teeth and just slightly puffy gums, but if the bacteria is under the gum line, it's uh, gonna start causing bone loss. And then again, the gums will gradually recede. And some people think that's just part of the aging process, but it doesn't have to be. Really? You can have that beautiful smile with the nice uh, white teeth and no spaces between the teeth well into your 60s or higher if you 
are able to keep gum disease out of your okay, mouth. Okay, now is this true? Okay, so I look it up on the internet, anticipating this interview, about 18 to 20 million Americans have either upper or lower denture. Does it all start with gum uh, disease? That's a very interesting concept. Mm -hmm. It is true. It might start with just a couple of teeth and then unchecked, they have the gum disease spread throughout their mouth. And I said before, it doesn't hurt a lot, but they slowly lose the support, the bone and the gum around their teeth, and then pretty soon they lose all their teeth. So the tooth starts to get loose? Absolutely. Okay. Is it the body's way of almost rejecting the tooth? Um, that's a simplified way of looking at it, but when the support, the gums shrink down and the bone melts away from the gum disease process, okay. then the tooth just gets loose from not having anything holding it in there. It's like building a house on sand. You can have a pretty white smile for a while, but if the gums uh, the support is not there, you're going to lose them. Okay, so bleeding gums is, uh, because I interrupted you, but, but, but bleeding gums, uh, puffy gums, what are the yes. other symptoms? Then we start seeing spaces between the teeth because of that recession of the gum, and then we start having loosening of the teeth, and then that gives way to uh, acute situations where a patient has swelling and pain, and they know they have a problem then. Could and hot and cold sensitivity not be just a cavity could be very much this. so when and you, why that's my that's what i'm wondering i tell people every day when you have gums that are not healthy quite often that is what's making your teeth sensitive and then sometimes instead of looking farther for a cavity if we don't see one we will clean their teeth or get their gum health in order and ask them then how their teeth feel and quite often, their teeth feel fine. Is it because, uh, okay, now, now you describe pockets, and we've talked on the phone, and I'm not sure I understand. Okay, so when you go in, your general dentist will say you have pockets. I mean, how does somebody, what, what are they told? That is the loosening of the gums, and when you have that loosening of the gums, we take a dental probe, as many people are familiar with, and we can probe deeper between the gum and the tooth when you have loosening, and we call those loosened gums pockets. Pockets for food to get caught in. Uh, it gets harder to clean around the teeth because everything gets caught in those pockets, and that's where the bacteria breed. So this laser, so I understand it correctly, it goes in, kills the bacteria. Is that right? That is correct. And I talked about a dental probe. Well, the laser is very much like a probe that's connected to the laser apparatus. So we put this thin little probe, slip it down between the gum and the tooth, and then we hit it with the laser and the laser energy gets rid of the bacteria, sterilizes the pocket, and tightens the gums, and the whole process is painless. So somebody watching this, and they have those symptoms, okay, the bleeding gums, uh, you know, bad breath, things like that. Uh, I mean, what do you tell them? I mean, what do you say to them? I tell them that this is a progression. This is going to get worse, and you should treat it now rather earlier than later. If we can do the treatment now and intervene, then it's so much easier on them. They feel more energetic. They uh, actually really feel better about themselves. Their smile looks good. And it's really something that they should address early on uh, rather than wait till it's too late. Okay. You know, again, you know, going back to when we talked on the telephone pre-production meeting, one of the things that, uh, that you say is that if there was an infection in any other part of the body, you would go to the doctor and take care of it. But because it's an infection in the mouth, People do nothing. Randy, this, Elaborate on that. Randy, this goes back to, in my experience throughout dentistry, knowing that people are anxious about coming to see us. And that's why I love this laser process now, because after they've even tried just a little treatment with the laser and realize it's not painful, uh, people are afraid of pain. Do you like having yeah, no, painful no. processes? So in all their past experiences with seeing dentists uh, or having gum treatment, if they're in that category, they know that there's some pain involved maybe afterwards. Well, with this process, I feel I can offer this treatment with the laser, and they don't have to worry about pain. So the anxiety... You say they go home with like a Motrin or, or an Advil or whatever. Absolutely. Most right? people don't even need any pain relief afterwards. But over-the-counter pain medicine like Advil, Tylenol, is all that patient needs that first night. You said, look, what I want to get across is that gum disease treatment doesn't have to be painful. You know, that's why I'm so enthusiastic about the gum laser treatment because it doesn't cause pain. I can offer something, I'm a dentist, I can offer something that will not cause pain. Most people... Well, cause causes some pain. I mean, you're going to, you know, so we don't have to have no, disclaimers Randy, all over this. You might need an Advil or a Tylenol. 
All right. that night after my treatment. That's it. Now, in the old days, because you said you did the older procedures, or, or the and I yes. shouldn't call them older. I guess they're being done every day. You, Gum you surgery. scrape. Okay, so there's this bacteria, and I want to understand this. So there's bacteria on the teeth underneath yes. the gum line. Yes. And you had to pull the gums back or cut them back and scrape it off. The gums that, are loose. Is, is that what cut. root planing is? Is that what that is? That's the first procedure we call that non-surgical, and okay. we do that. But then it often leads, due to failure of that treatment, it leads to gum surgery or traditional surgery where the gums are cut and they're loosened and then the roots are cleaned and then the gums are sutured back in place and it takes at least a month to get healed up. And, very sore uh, to eat. Very sore. There's stitches in the mouth, is that right? Oh uh, yeah, and sometimes a packing placed around the teeth to protect the gums that are going to be healing for three or four weeks.